Astronauts have been coming to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida for 30 years to practice launch day aboard a space shuttle. Monday, June 20th, saw the arrival of the last crew to take part in the dress rehearsal. Its meaning was not lost on the astronauts. Uh, you know, I, th I think I speak for the whole crew. You know, we're very honored to be in this position. There's many people who could be here. We just happened to, uh, when the dice fell, we were, you know, our names were facing up. So we consider ourselves fortunate, lucky. Chris Ferguson, Doug Hurley, Sandy Magnus, and Rex Walheim flew to Kennedy aboard T-38 to begin four days of intense training known as the Terminal Countdown Demonstration Test. Ferguson and Hurley, who will be at the controls of Space Shuttle Atlantis during launch and landing, practice touching down at Kennedy's shuttle landing facility using the shuttle training aircraft to simulate the shuttle's unique characteristics. Day two saw the astronauts take turns driving one of the M113s that will be stationed near the launch complex when they lift off. In the unlikely event of an emergency, the astronauts would climb inside the M113 to drive away from danger. The crew got an up-close look at Atlantis as it stood on launch pad 39A on the third day of TCDT. Included a detailed walk down of the cargo bay where they saw their primary payload, the Raffaello Multipurpose Logistics Module, or MPLM. Raffaello will be loaded with experiments, equipment, and supplies for the International Space Station. Once in orbit, the STS-135 astronauts will work with the station residents to unload the module and fill it up with concluded experiments and other items that are no longer needed on the station. It's a pleasure to be here, and especially uh, right in front of the uh, space shuttle, just gives you goosebumps uh, thinking that we're going to get to ride that in about two weeks. The training is rich in tradition and history, and the astronauts do not take its lessons for granted. It's just a very comprehensive, uh, hands-on, at the place you're going to do it kind of training, and, and it's invaluable. I mean, you can do all the simulators in the world, but to, until you get in that real vehicle, touch the vehicle, see what you can reach, see the different switches, uh, you know, everything's just a little bit different when you're in the real vehicle. So it, it's, it's a great way to get you ready for the launch day when it counts. Their last day opened with a full dress rehearsal for launch day, targeted for July 8th. The astronauts pulled on their launch and entry suits, took their seats aboard Atlantis's flight deck, and ran through a countdown simulation. Now we're just the tip of the iceberg of a huge group of people who plan and uh, get the hardware ready and prepare our, our procedures and then watch over the vehicle while we're on board. And uh, we feel very, very strongly that we have to be prepared as possible to perform the mission to the, the extent that um, they're expecting it of us. And I think when it's all done, we can all celebrate together, not only just the mission, but the whole program. You know, we, I, I think, and we haven't talked about this, I think each of us feels a little perhaps extra burden to make sure that we put on the best possible face forward for the last, uh, for the last go around of this. And the crew's very prepared. We're gonna go out and do a, a fantastic job. And uh, like I said, when it's all over at the very end, I, I think that's when it's good. The enormity of it is, is gonna hit us. Uh, you know, that last wheel stop is, uh, call is gonna be a little tough. After lunch and a review of the equipment they will use in space, Ferguson, Hurley, Magnus, and Walheim boarded their jets and returned to NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. They are to return July 4th for the final flight of the shuttle's 30-year history. <laughs>